So the past few weeks on the social medias have been very, very interesting and entertaining. Evidently, voodoo tires are worth more than Bitcoin was at its peak. And there's people that are willing to pay those prices. But I did see a statistic that said that uh, they won pretty much all the big races last year. So maybe it's not a bad investment if you're one of those kind of people. What is up, guys? I'm Chad. Welcome back to the Dorky and 40 RC channel. We do no prep drag. We do FPV. I also have a secondary telescoping astrophotography channel. Link in the description below if you want to check that out and support me. Also been working on the stream here a little bit. You can see the lights. We got a new webcam going on besides the main A cam. So trying to clean things up a little bit and roll right into 2022. As soon as I get myself healed up a little bit, so you're going to probably get spammed with a lot of content over the next couple of weeks. Cause I got to find something to do. Cause I got to find some way to be productive while I'm laid up here in my house. Now, one of the best things we can do is we can go to said social medias and do this nice little show. I like to call fast on Facebook and what fast on Facebook is, is we're just going to browse through all of the bigger no prep drag RC Facebook groups, and we're going to see what's going on out there, what the pulse of the community is. We are kind of in between races right now. There's not very many product developments going on, but you can see that we've still got people coming in and we got people going out. So let's do it. So the first thing I always like to check is the MPRC experience, which is pretty much the group ran by Mark Vine now, I believe, ever since he left the bullet experience. And you're going to see a lot of people that are uh, selling a lot of things. So if you guys are looking for some good deals, there's uh, some DRKs and some Phantom Motors and stuff like that. Of course, there's Voodoo's out there for sale for a big price. It looks like everybody finally started to get their deliveries of their Voodoo tires. So I'm pretty happy with everybody. I can't wait to see what happens when people get these in their hands. More, you know, normal racers like you and I, just to see exactly uh, what they do for people. I would love to get my hands on a set and you know try them out in the spring but we're just gonna have to wait there's no sense in me going out and looking for anything like that right now new wheelie bar for the apollo car uh people talking about batteries i haven't actually looked into batteries lately don't really need one mine's kind of sitting back there in a discharge mode it might actually be time to cycle that thing so remember that cycle your batteries we probably need to do some wintertime maintenance on everything so it's probably a video that you're going to see coming up on the channel reactions there's still a mix of ribbed and ribless out there and basically i take it from this post that depending upon where you buy them at some people actually specify whether they are ribbed or ribless and if you're kind of wanting to know what the difference is it really comes down to the foam and the way that the tire and the sidewall is going to expand on you even though they are belted some all work better than others i honestly don't know which one is inside of mine the ones with airs and the ones that have the foam in them i do know that whichever one it is it is the one with foam that i ran my fastest time on of a 1998 that is a cool looking body right there wow that looks really sick i love that gray paint i would like to find out exactly what color that is i see that on a lot of new cars these days it's got this really cool tone of uh i don't know really cool tone of gray tire conditioner preconditioners is not your prep they say you can use this stuff in between races and for prepping and stuff I have always used Beetlejuice or just Wintergreen. I've never got into the Frank's Lemonade or any of this stuff yet, but it is definitely something that I will be trying in the future. I'd like to see exactly how well it does compared to what I've been doing now. I just prep my tires with the Beetlejuice. I clean them with naphtha and I use reaction time and heat, lots of heat, whether it's cold or hot out. I've just, just what I've always done. And it seems to have worked the best for me so far. Definitely want to try some of that out. Would also like to try some of that get stuck. So I might have to give Jeff Zuccarello a ring. People building their own trees. That is really cool to see. Some discussion about battery connectors, XT90 bullets. XT90s to me, I think seem to be the happy medium. I am using QS8, but boy, they are hard to get apart. And I've seen some seven and eight millimeter bullets as well that just make things 
really difficult to get the batteries disconnected when everything's mounted and you're trying to charge and everything's fast. What happens is the plastic just kind of like gets hot and they kind of melt and fuse together every time that you do a hit and they kind of need to cool down and then you can get them apart. The problem is, is that if you need to like charge in between like a 10 minute round, the last thing you want to be doing is trying to pry your connectors apart. I always love watching uh, people with their tire conditioner and their voodoo sticking things together and stuff. So that's just fun. It's amazing the stuff that we're, is going on right now. The Maumee race that Jeff is putting on up in Maumee in Ohio on June 11th. I will be there. I have already been called at by Al. Al, I'm coming for you. You better get ready, buddy, because you're going to get the best of old dorky and 40. Talking about using the DI, talking about using an iPad with the DRK. It was great with the Wi-Fi when the Wi-Fi adapter works. But honestly, now with the new software, I am going to be taking the laptop. I take the laptop anyway to use the Castle software. So when I'm running the DR10 with the DRK built into it, I will be using the laptop. Just so much easier to do the logging and everything. It's just pretty much the way to go. I don't know what this is, this body. Oh, whoa, that's like a nitro car, but that thing is sick. Let's stop by five star hobbies and see what's going on. It seems like five star is just constantly coming up with new ways to take our money, which is a good thing. And I guess you could look at it as a bad thing, but they've got a new chassis coming out. It looks like they're testing. They're always testing. They've got aluminum arms. They've got their pre-orders. Ooh, they got their pre-order going on for their complete aluminum transmission. How much is that thing? $260. Wow. I knew it was going to be super expensive. I mean, even the best aluminum transmissions that I used to get for my crawlers were nowhere near that price. And, uh, boy, that's going to be a hard pill to swallow. I don't see myself getting that as bad as I would want to. It's a bad looking car, Todd, that's for sure. I'm pretty excited, I think, to try one of these shocked or single wheelie bars just to see what they're all about. I really don't need to change my wheelie bar, but one thing I do need to focus on this year is just making my car a little bit lighter. My car is a beast, and I am never going to be able to hit the speeds and keep up with some of these guys if that is not my focus. So that really is going to be my primary focus this year at the early of the season is to try to maintain my speed and my ET and get the weight of the car down. I think that is going to be paramount to making any improvements from here on out. Boy, five star really does just make some cool stuff though, man. It is hard not to pay for their bling. I just, I mean, I'm super happy with that purchase of that car. Up, oh, they've got their Delrin aired wheels on pre-order for a set. How much are they? $140. How? Man. And you get a valve stem to put air into it. Man, I don't know, guys. I we are really, really pricing ourselves into a corner with all this stuff. They've really dropped a lot of cool aluminum parts lately and everything. The problem is, is it's like you look at all this stuff and, you know, how much faster is a $260 transmission going to make me? You know, I'm already at two seconds. So how much money do I have to spend to get to consistent 1.9s or consistent 1.85s? I just don't think it's... Here's your Delrin version for the case only. So this is a hundred bucks. And then you're going to actually just go ahead and throw all of your stuff into there. And, you know, I don't really see a, a reason why I would need to replace the stock plastic one. It's working just fine. The complete kit, $210. Nice. A Traxxas slash conversion pre-order. Now that sounds pretty cool. An actual slash. Now, I'm really interested in is just looking at the chassis and what they are selling. Now, we know they got a V2 coming out. See what kind of differences and stuff that they have, um, you know, with the kit here. Really, I'm seeing not a whole lot besides them dropping all of the unnecessary rails, which I've done already. They've got the V2 anti-roll bar on there. 
which I have. This is all stock stuff back here that it comes with. I have the upgraded single shock mount and the little weight box that goes in the back here. No, there's no actual ways to choose and pick what size shock towers and stuff that you want. I really wish that they would come out with a kit that would allow you to do something like that. Basically like, you know, a builder's kit, you pick it and you get it. Top plate eliminator for the waterfall brace. I mean, I've got mine cut all out of the place. So I really just have a small part. So if I went with a waterfall brace like this, I might be able to cut like another 10 grams or something. So that might be something to look into in the future. And then of course, this is their new car and chassis that they're gonna be coming out with called the Strip which is definitely a stripped down, you know, version of the breakout. Everything's a little bit lighter and a little bit smaller. It looks like they've got the short uh, cut down front and rear shock towers on there. A new bumper that is on there. It looks like they've got a redesigned Bob's weight box that goes on there. So again, this stuff is just kind of disappointing that they're kind of pushing us in the direction that we're going to have to, um, yeah, here it is. You know, you're going to have to spend more money to change things out. I like the innovation, but man, again, how much of this is going to make you that much faster? I mean, that's between this, the transmission and the wheels, that's like six, 700 bucks. How many tenths of a second do you think that you could gain off of that? If any. All right, well, we just got to get away from this page. Let's go to the McLaren DRK page. Well, it looks like there is um, more talk of them about uh, free revving and burning out the DRKs. I mean, you know, look at it this way. Colin and Tim both admitted that the DRK TSR, the new 160, the only difference is the thicker wires, the software, and the cat pack. It's got the same FETs in it, which you can guarantee are not the same FETs that were in the ones that first came out. There's a reason why my OG DRK160 I bought like this time last year is still running. And the one I bought previously after that blew up, was recalled, was sent back, came back, blew up. I treat it no differently than I did the other one and it's still alive. So... If you're using the same FETs and those FETs are probably of a lesser quality because let's face it, electronics are hard to get right now, then that's probably going to be a problem. And it looks like they're just always doing damage control, man. Um, trying to tell people things to do to not blow up their cars. Um, I don't know. There must be a lot more problems then they let on about you know how they say that like only the people who have problems complain well i don't know incorrect radio calibrations people having issues with the tsr tim smith tune i've seen that don't know why it looks pretty good there's got to be something that people are missing on that and a lot of people kind of asking the same questions about slew rate and setting turbo and everything else like that that's fine you guys will get all your questions answered and I've covered a lot of that stuff in my own videos here on the channel. So if you're watching this and you're new, definitely go back and check out all of those DRK adventures and you can see how I went from slow to kind of fast with it over the course of last season. And I see a red light of death on here as well, which is pretty much the same thing that happened during the recall. So maybe they got some batches that aren't good out there. I'm not 100% sure. Well, that was an interesting trip down Facebook lane right now. There is a lot going on, especially from Five Star. Wow. Some of that stuff looks so awesome. But, uh, you know, that breakout car right there, the chassis, whatever. I think I'm just going to roll with it and see what happens. I really don't see myself dropping the seven to $800 for that kind of stuff. I would almost rather build another car at this point to play with and have fun with. Tell me what you guys think. Do you think these prices are crazy? Do you think that no prep drag can even exist with prices like that? We already have inflation and everything else going on. So we have definitely entered that realm of pay to play. 
which is unfortunate and it doesn't look like anybody manufacturer or builder or whatever is doing anything to try to keep the cost down to bring people in to the hobby which is unfortunate because i just don't like it when people say hey rc hobbies are expensive you shouldn't be involved if you can't afford it i just don't believe in that that's not the community that we have built here so maybe we will focus more on the dr10 we'll see what's happening i don't know but until later guys Peace.